without a doubt the back is the silliest muscle to build since there's so many intricate muscles so many functions and movements i always had a really hard time filling it out when i was younger and i never really got a pump so as any teenager would do in that situation i just neglected it and did chest instead i got the filthiest chest pumps bro. those were the good old days however the back contributes to one of the most important parts of an aesthetic and attractive body which is the v taper and neglecting it is just pretty dumb you're not you're just gonna look like a fridge who wants to look like a fridge to break it down with some physiology as usual the width is mainly done by growth of the lats or the latissimus dorsi who says the actual name of the words so we just call it lats thickness done by the traps and both rhomboids which is minor and major i don't know the difference or functions of the two but the depth and thickness of your back mainly and the lower back which gives that like christmas tree at the very bottom it's good to grow if you have like back pain or something pretty good to do some back extension is it or deadlifts and squats if you're going to do that lightly and not just one at max every time which is usually what happens so <laughs> just try and avoid that a common theme that i mostly find online and for myself especially is when you're doing back you mainly feel your biceps and your forearms and not your actual back your back is comprised of so many muscles it's actually pretty hard to feel it out and a very simple cue that i find works wonders is simply just pulling with your elbows instead of your arms because i mean what your bicep does is mainly just this right and what your lats do is mainly like this it does like a kind of the same but like it like pulls and also when you're doing like overhead stuff it mainly like pulls it right down there so mainly just think about pulling with your elbows instead of your arms and going like this hopefully I explained that well enough to help with this as well another tip is to simply do warm-up sets before and mainly I'd say with like cables you can do like those one arm pull down things and try and really feel the lats low weight and do this before any exercises we're going to mention later and for all intents and purposes we're just going to skip lower back since I mainly said that's for like lower body movements your deadlifts and squats and kind of mainly any movement ever since your lower back is going to get involved if you're like standing or something right anyways on to building your width or your lats as you can see here <laughs> what the fuck i have like a tiny waist so my lats aren't actually that big but since my waist is so small it gives it like it's the mad v taper but for your lats i only really do two exercises lat pull down and pull ups and to do it, I mean basically just one and a half, one and a half shoulder width apart and just pull up and try and think of pulling with your elbows again, don't try and think of pulling with your biceps. I think there's research saying that if you do pull ups, it's a bit more involved with your biceps and that pull down targets your lats more. So I'd mainly just go with that if you're thinking of purely for aesthetics and not to tire out your bicep as well. You can also like use grips, you can also use grips on it as well a lot easier if you're doing it on like a pull-up bar it's just a bit weird so i wouldn't really do it there but that's up to you but that's pretty simple just do those two exercises i sometimes do pull-ups first since i like i can just tire out on them a lot more and plus if you're doing pull-ups it's more like it's a calisthenic movement it's you're using your own body weight and it's good to have that body weight to strength ratio right anyways onto your mid back muscles i would heavily recommend a row of some sort um, bent over barbell row is like the classic classic compound lift and there's also other research i'm not gonna like cut any studies by the way i'm just saying I swear i've heard these studies somewhere um definitely not just watched a jeff nipple video and came up with this video i wouldn't do that but the rows actually involve the lats and mid back more than the pull up and lat pull downs i think don't quote me on that but basically it involves your lats a lot as well so i recommend some rows to build your mid back and your lats as well when it comes to like grips good rule of thumb is when you have, <laughs> have to show my thumb good rule of thumb good rule of thumb is whenever you pull in more you're going to get more lat involvement and when whenever it's more out like this and just a wider grip it's going to be more mid back because i think i mean even if you just like act it out when you're whenever it's like tighter in you can feel a lot more stretch with your lats and it's just a lot more easier to feel it out 
if it's a lot wider, I mean, you can't really squeeze your lats as much. So whenever your lats like go like that, rows, dumbbell rows, barbell rows, whatever row you want to be honest. I mean, that's pretty much all you need. That's kind of all I do and it works pretty well. The back is not really that difficult to train to be honest. It's just that pull downs, rows. And the next up, next, the next up, next up is I guess you're like your upper back. You can do, um, what's that? What's that called? I don't fuck, like inverted thighs, inverted chest flies, I don't know. <laughs> face pulls, um, I guess it'd mainly just be like face pull. Face pull. <laughs> Upper back is very important when it comes to like shoulder injury prevention. So obviously that's gonna be a no-brainer to train. Your traps. I've heard some people say it's pretty on aesthetic whenever it's too built. And they are pretty easily built. They have the mo one of the most androgen receptor... Yeah, they have they're one of the muscles with the, with the most androgen receptors. I'm trying to think of the grammar there. So they're pretty easily built. But if you build them too much, it kind of makes you more narrow. Um, if you build them too much, I definitely do work at them like sometimes. Mainly just train your neck to be honest. Because I mean it kind of gives the same appearance. I've been training my neck. It's probably going to be one of my next videos. I think that's mostly it. Um, how often do you want to train your back? Two to three times would be a good frequency amount to train them. Uh, if you're doing like push pull legs or something. Push pull legs and push pull. Um, something like that. I do uh, Arnold split. So it's going to be chest and back legs arm shoulders and i mean i just run chest and back twice in a week so it'd be four times a week since i do work chest and back all together um i find that to be the best like ways to train as well because there's like anti antagonistic muscles so you can just work chest work back work chest and you can just get it through a lot quicker and you know give time to your back and chest to actually recover and work a lot harder and get more volume in basically again back is like 8 to 20 sets per week that's like the, the optimal spot i have heard anecdotally that you can like train more back than usual but this is going to be individual i do find it as well like i can just train my lats a lot more than other muscles like my legs or like my front shoulders they like they tire up pretty quickly okay, 8 to 20 sets per week should be the soft spot at the higher end anecdotally that's what i heard anyway but when it comes to like any program it's pretty individual like this whole workout thing is pretty individual at the end of the day it's like a diet not everyone's gonna have the same diet and like thrive at it there's gonna be some people who prefer to eat keto there's gonna be some people who prefer to fast there's gonna be some people who prefer to eat carnivore and liver all fucking day and clean natural like that's totally up to them <laughs> it is very individual to you so whatever exercise i do say in this video whatever spits i do give take it with a grain of salt like just experiment a bit you can have a bit of fun with this you know do things that you actually enjoy and not just do some push pull leg split you see on online and be like yep i'm just gonna do this and not change the damn thing because that's not fun and you're probably gonna prefer something else but i feel like i've done a lot of talking today hopefully that's helped you somewhat with your back training and training that back and getting a voluptuous V taper. And as always, I love mummies. <laughs> no, as always, from hate to love.